Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Good catch up now with Webby. Plenty to talk about. First of all, Webby, you've been busy, lad, haven't you? A couple of big nights coming up at Old Cell Football. Obviously, I'll tell you about them at the end of the video, but looking forward to them. Some I've been trying to get in for years. It's all coming to a plan, like uh, Mr. T. Love it when a plan comes together. So hopefully it'll be some great nights and we'll speak about it later on. So Plenty to talk about, like I say. Webby's not been on for a while. Been a busy lad, news developments over the weekend, so I think what we'll do, we'll get straight into that. Omar Barrara, never on our radar, Webby. Never heard of him before. What do you make of it? It's a big statement by Radcliffe and the firm, you know, to bring him on board. You know, obviously, he's, he's been at City, you know, he gets highly thought of. But no, he can only be for the good, so, because at the moment, we're in a mess. You know what I mean? What's gone on over the years, we've spoken about in previous videos, people at the club, taking big money out. I don't know what they actually do. But obviously, this man obviously was the main source of getting Ireland to sit there and a lot of us through the door. So it's only going to be benefit from United, you know what I mean? He wants to come on, whether he's come on because he knows what's going to happen down the road, you know, as he jumped off the ship, what's that it? Yeah. Bottom. No, but it's, it's a great signing, you know, and it can only help the club forward, not just in recruiting players, just to get the mess which we're in at the moment, mate. From the point of Ineos, getting this structure right, this is the first piece of the jigsaw, surely, Webby? The first piece of a big jigsaw that needs sorting, Tony. You know, we all know the problems starting from the top to the bottom. It's a mess, it's rotten. You know, we need people out of that club who don't even deserve to be there. You know, it's, it, is a manager going to get backed? You know, will he stay on the end of the season? There's a lot of talk, but it's the first signing tour of many others which need to happen, you know, to get this club back to where they belong. Because our league position, tells the state of the club, it's in a mess. You know, we know there's no deserved right to be at the top of the league, but where we are in the league and some of the results and performance this year, it's matched what's going on at the club. It's rotten, it's terrible, and it needs sorting. And hopefully this is the first one to start steadying the ship and bring us back to where we belong, mate. I look back through football time and that, I've not seen anything like this, to be honest with you, Webby, uh, since 2003, Peter Kenyon leaving United. Go to Chelsea we have, when a brother it's coming. I mean, I, I look back at them days, Webby, and I thought, that's massive. That's like, that's a shock to me as a United fan, losing someone at the time of great capabilities in Peter Kenyon. Yeah, no, you're spotting it as a major blow losing Kenyon, obviously at Chelsea at that time. But like you're saying, he's, he can only do good for the club. Yeah. And it's what we need. You know, we're in a mess, so I'm you know, saying it again. We need someone to come in and sort stuff out. And he's proved that at Barcelona and at City who wanted him in a proper mess like we was, can come in, oversee everything, make the right decisions for the benefit of Manchester United Football Club. And hopefully, it's not, not going to happen overnight, obviously. No. But he'll start, once he starts, he'll start getting the duck eggs out. Yeah. Who are milking the place. And like you're saying, it's, it's only going to benefit us. You know, it might take one year, two year, three year, four year. But while he's on board, he knows what he's doing and he'll get the job done to his best of his capabilities. I want to look at that. January, it's transfer window and everything. Looks as though clear, clear to me, and I think clear to many people, and it's been that way for a long time, that there's not going to be any incomings here, big names coming in and all that. I mean, what's your key position on the field that has to be addressed in the summer, Webby? Centre forward. We need someone to score goals, so scruffy goals, little tappings, you know. The other day I was sat at home, and uh, that under the Premiership club and... Rude Van Nistelrooy, you know, you see the goals he scored for us and the play he was. Now, I'm not going to say we're going to, there's another Rude Van Nistelrooy, but there's someone out there. And I also look at the wingers as well, and I feel sorry for the kid. He's not getting a service because if that kid signed for, was, would have signed for City, he would have probably the 15 goals with the service they put up. So we need wingers who set people on. You know, Ganacho's there, and I feel the pressure to put on him as a young kid, but we need wingers who attack like the old days. You know, we've been brought up, you know, Coppel, Gordon, no proper wingers, and we had Sharp, Kinchelski, Sharp, Giggs, you know, and it's our wingers don't create enough things for the centre forwards. So, but firstly, all we need a centre forward, an honourable one. The one who's going to, I don't want a centre forward who beats 20 men, just put them in the six yard box. I think some of Rude's goals for United was outside the box, the rest were in. That's what we need a predator. And his players about there, so you, but let's get the right player. Let's get the right player. Let's look, at, look wherever. But there's someone out there who can come in and score us 25 scruffy goals well, and put us up there. Going now into the second part of the season, there's been lots of players not being able to do what they were bought for, Webby. 
I look at it there, Tony. I'm not going to go on about injuries because every team gets injuries. It's part and parcel of football. But Christ, we've had our share yeah. in some key positions. You know, I think one of the biggest ones for me was um, the missing of Luke Shaw for about 14, 15 games. Yeah. Terrible miss. And then Maguire comes in, starts playing well and right deserves to be back in two. He gets injured. I just think that, you know, you look at that Tottenham game, who had a lot of injuries and people away. They dominated the game. So at Old Trafford, they dominated possession. With three or four of their top players out, you know we should come. We scored the early goal. We should make that statement and carry on. Yeah. And then we got the game. I think it was something like sixty-one thirty-nine for Tottenham at Old Trafford with top players missing. We've got to start making teams fear us again because you come to Old Trafford years ago before the ball was kicked. So we was winning two three nil. Now hey, we've got nothing to be worried about coming here. Look at Bournemouth. Look at Palace. The list goes on, Tony. We need players in that team who want to fight, who want to battle for the club, want to win every 50 50. At the moment, we've got nothing, so we've got nothing. I mean, the manager wants them to go out there, sets them up all week. This is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to play. You know, you look at the Villa game, the effort and everything, the commitment, it was all there. Why isn't that happening? Is it the players, Webby? You've got to blame the players. You know, the manager picks his team, does a tactic through the week. Once they go over that line, at Eight minutes to three or whatever time at Old Trafford, it's down to them. Some of them aren't just good enough, so they're not good enough. I'm, do, I'm not going to come on here and slag them off, but I always say to, you, to people like you, Kieran, would that player get in that squad? Would that player get in that squad? What player, what player have we got in our team would get in the top four starting 11? Very, very, maybe one, maybe two. Nothing else. We've got too many players at this club, so, and it's not their fault. They're on big contracts and they're not good enough. They're simply not good enough to wear that shirt. And we can't continue doing this. Season after getting up the first game of the season. Oh, what do you fancy this year, Webber? Oh, top four again. We should be saying we want to win the league, yeah. but we can't with them. No. Tony, we've woke up in the, in the 90s and the, the, the 2000s. First game of the season, well, we're going to win this league again. But Go now we it, can't. Yeah. We're going to win it. We, look, at, look at that play we've got. Look at him. He's the best player in the league. We can't say that now. We've got too many bad players, so who are sat here on contracts. You look at Phil Jones. Yeah. Okay, now the money he made and he never played, that's no not his fault. Five year contracts. That's not his fault. You know, he took the money and he's ran. Fair play to him, but we need to get and it's gonna be hard getting some of these out because they're on big contracts. And that's the person who's give the contracts, it's their fault. It's not the player's fault, but we need more, much top quality players in. Whether the owners are gonna back us is questionable, but hopefully they will. We get some of them out, we get players in, and we start making Manchester United a force again. I've I've spoken on the channel many, many times, Webby turned around and said, when someone like Ineos takes over a, over a football club and that you've seen it time and time again, big changes are made. And normally the manager, he goes, whether he goes straight away, but he goes within six months. Do you see him keeping him now? Who would you want? Who's available? You know, we've always got managers who have been out of contract, we've not paid no compo. You look at the, the thing with Chelsea when he got part of the thing, something like 30 million conversation to give to Brighton. Yeah. Six yeah. months later or whatever, he's, he's gone. Yeah. We've got to make the right choice. Hopefully, back to Nag, I think he can do a good job, but like you say, Ineos will be looking at it before they, they come in. They'll be looking at it now. I think the decision we made at the end of the season, whether he stays or goes. I just think now United have got to get on a run, get to a, the cup final, try and get in that top four. I know I'm asking for a lot, but obviously the ultimate thing comes out of the manager. And if they're not right, he's going to go. But then who do we bring in? So you look at what Ineos want to do. Okay. They've started with that Omar and they want to go and get best in class. Has Eric Tenag really had the best in class behind the scenes working with him? Well, he's brought his own men in and he's, obviously he trusts them and he knows them. He's brought them in. You know, I look at Steve McLaren. No one knew about him in the 90s. He come from Derby County, wanted to turn up to a match. We won the treble. But what does he do? Now, I don't know. I don't know what he does. Obviously, he's got his own men in. Are he good enough? You know, I look at the Dutch league compared to the premierships. It's two total, two total different leagues, obviously. But I don't know. So, is he big enough for Manchester United? I look at the manager, you know. I look at Mourinho when he come here. Now, we always Mourinho would have come after Sir Alex left. It never happened. You know, that, that was made for those. Eh? And that's nothing against David Moyes. I just think the club was too big for him. You know, I think 
That was my opinion, you know, did he get enough time? They've got to make the right decision. If, if they keep him, they've got to back him. If they don't back him, there's no point in being here. But it's crucial. And on that, so I think that at the end of the season, he goes. I think they've got someone in plan. Uh, I might be wrong, that's just my opinion. If he gets into the top four and we win the FA Cup, then... Did he sack him? But they sacked Van Gaal after we won the FA Cup. Yeah. So it's an hard one. So, but well, the right decision's got to be well, made. Well, I look at it, it's an hard one. I think to myself, behind the scenes, inside the club, not on the pitch or anything like that, the people just haven't been there to make the decisions, the right people. Uh, so I think he has been let down. And if, if they keep him, I think they might just have a look at him for a year because I don't believe that Ineos are coming straight in here in the summer, Webby. And, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't blame him spending big money I think they just need to sit and just like sort out who they need to get out and bring one or two players in and then just like look at it for maybe 12 18 months before they do the push because it's going to take time to get the right people in place that's what I believe so I think they might just keep him and I don't believe that they're going to spend money I, I just don't not straight away Webby if we don't, so we don't go further, further down that league, mate. Obviously, you, you look at the likes of I mean, City winning the league when we were second a few years back. They went out and spent hundred million on a couple of players to make them stronger. So we've got to go out because if we don't, these top teams are just going to go further and further away from us, Tony. And we can't afford that to happen. You know, years ago it'd be like two teams for the title: us and Arsenal, us and Chelsea, us and Liverpool. Now you're talking four to five teams. Yeah, they yeah. were going for it, you know. I mean, who would have thought Villa would have been up there? Well, you wouldn't have thought like, like at this stage of the season, four or four, possibly five teams have actually got a chance of winning the league. That's how strong it is now. And it's only going to get stronger, too, because the teams like Villa and Liverpool will, will go strong again. City will always buy, you know, Tottenham, Arsenal, you know, you, you, Newcastle, we've got about them, you know. So now, years ago, like I just said, be two or three teams to win the league. Now you've got five, six. Ineos have got big, big decisions to make at the end of the season and in the summer. And just before we, we wrap up, Webby, I think the biggest decision is Mason Greenwood. Is he going to stay? Will they keep him? Or will they just get rid of him? Your opinion on that, Webby. I'm going to give mine with you. Put me right on the spot, that's all. We know well, what, I'm, I'm yeah, gonna get, not, know what it is. I'm not putting you on the spot, what, what, what it is, Webby. I'm going to give my opinion on it because at the end of the day, is a talent, but I look at it this way. Is it is it the right fit, the right image? And, and the reason why I'm saying this is because it's Ineos what is in charge of the football inside of it now. It's image, Webby. Yeah, I know it's all about images and like we don't, certain sponsors didn't want anything involved, but I've watched these, his... He's playing in Spain. Barcelona are quite keen on him. Yes, Real Madrid no, that, that, that been was, playing well. That's why we and he actually it, w- sat down the, last week to watch a game. He got sent off yeah. for arguing with the ref. But we know what he's like. The team was going to be built around him because I've said it on here, said it on elsewhere. He's the most natural finisher I've seen in the game since Robbie Fowler. Do we sell him? Do we bring him back? You know, I, the one thing I didn't like about it when he was asking, when he asked the women's team, do you want him back? It's a football club decision. Whoever's at the top makes that decision. They live or die by it. That's what Ineos are here for. Yeah. It? He's an 150 plus million pound player. This club is not going to let him go for nothing. Maybe they get a suitable offer for him. What works for all parties, he may go. But we know what his talent's like on the pitch. Ineos, Webby. Uh, and it's all about the football inside of it. And I, I believe the, the image, I, I, I don't, think they'll want it and I think they'll also look at it a little bit deeper uh, not just about the off-field thing about what's gone on uh, at Old Trafford in the past with him and I think uh, they'll have an issue with it and I think to be honest with you I think they'll get rid of him and sell him and they will get good money like you say he's been turning it on and all that uh, would I want to keep him and all that I'm not too sure Webby I, I, I pers- I'm personally on the on the on the side with it. If it did come back to it, it'd be like a new signing, wouldn't it be mint? But oh, yeah. I understand everyone's point of view. Yeah, yeah. We've got so many for so many games. It's all about image now. You can't do anything so yeah. social media, cameras on phones, you can't do you can't do that. If we sell him, it's got to be at the right price. It's not a decision. decision. No, massive it's, it's one of I, the, I made up it's not our decision. No, it's it's a massive decision. So yeah, you know, we we sell him, we've got to get hundred mil. 
We've got to get 100 mil. You've seen there, Barcelona and Real Madrid are sniffing around him. Yeah, yeah. So let's wait and see. But it's a massive decision yeah. for the people coming in. Smash that like button. Get your comments in. But as I said, Webby's been busy. So I'll just finish it off with that one, Webby. Yeah, hotel football, the weekend in the Everton game, uh, Friday night for March. Sportsman's dinner, Ryan Giggs, proper top night, comedian, a lot. Looking forward to it. First of many, I hope then I've got a, a massive one in September as well, which obviously I'll tell you near the time. But check on the description, the links below uh, of this video. Get on to Hotel Football, get your tickets, which will be a great night. So looking yeah, yeah. forward to it. Yeah, a great night. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have an interview with him coming up soon. So listen, like I said, smash that like button, get your comments in, and I hope you enjoyed having Webby back on the channel and we'll get him back soon as we can. Thank you.